Hello everyone, it's Mel from Everything Marmy. Welcome to Thursday, the 21st of March, 2024. Uh, well, let's do a project today. Yeah, let's do a project. I am still not finished with the Commit 30, can you believe it? We're already into the third week of March and I'm still decorating, but, you know, life is a creative uh, spiral. Um, I agree with Julia Cameron. Life is a spiral, and as artists, as I believe we all are, we slowly work our way through our projects. And sometimes we work more on one project than we work on the other projects, but that's the nature of the beast, if you will. The heart wants what the heart wants. And if you look at the word heart, art is right inside of it literally. So what do I have here? I have some Daphne's diary. I've got edition number one of this year. And in this one, I think it is number one of 2021. So generally speaking, Daphne's diary comes out eight times a year. So number one is that period between the New Year's and about just after Valentine's Day. So why do I want this? Well, of course, because this book started on a new year, right? So I'm going to remove those for a moment. And this project I have talked to you guys about, this case that I have my large commit 30 in, um, I thrifted and... I can't remember the specific price, but knowing me, I probably paid a maximum of $3 for it. I'm even thinking probably two. It is a pleather case. And I was very fortunate that the large Commit 30 fit in here. And I've put on a few um, charms to just doll it up. The ballerina, I have a charm collection. This is a pin and that is a paper clip. That's all I've done to it so far. But I did talk to you about the inside. And this is going to fill the whole screen and I could lift you up higher. But for the moment, we'll just focus on this because actually maybe I should lift you up a little higher. So you get the whole view. So as you can see, it opens up into somewhat of a tri-fold. With the book itself being held in this section here, which would probably hold one of those yellow legal pads. And it's got this almost like a velvety kind of feel here. And I spoke about painting this. Okay, and so I'm going to slide out this Commit 30. And I know many of you want to see me do a plan with me. I will do a plan with me. But that um, plan with me always ends up becoming more decorating until I feel like the, the case is complete, which I made this plastic case out of a file folder. And what is that poking out from the top? Oh, that's just, that's just the week that we have last week. So I still have to do this week, guys. Still have to do this week. And so that plan with me will come. Okay, so we're going to remove that. But as you can see, like I've put on all sorts of like material. Um, I've like taking some lace, a lot of trims, and some like pockets here, and acetate and made this case. And there is a video on how I did it. Uh, if you just go back, or maybe I'll link it below if I remember to do that. Now, this is what I have left of the material. And I would like to make use of that. And I also have this material too. And I was like, oh my goodness, like I just love this material. Look at that. It's got 
This is part of a Dollar Tree haul that I haven't actually done on my channel yet. Um, but look at the blues, the pinks, the yellows, the sparkly gold bits. I mean, it's beautiful. It's crafter square and it's craft fabric and it's 18 by 21 inches. So it's, it's gorgeous. All right. So the book is out. I'm going to take that out. I'm going to take off the charm. And all I did here was just cut a little hole. Not perfect, as you can tell. Nothing about what I do is perfect, but that's coming off. This doesn't need to come off, but this does. Well, does the pin need to come off? No, I'm not going to take the pin off. It doesn't need to come off, but, and neither do the pins actually, but I will, I will actually do that. I'm not taking the pin off because I struggled getting it on. Um, and so this, this is, yeah, not something I want to repeat. And I'm just going to remove the decorations very quickly. I hope you guys are all doing well. Are you doing well? Thursday, guys. It's Thursday. Um, I hope you have a drink, a nice hot cup of something. Or your breakfast, your toast, or whatever. <laughs> um, now, I need to clean this up again. Like, I've cleaned it up several times, but this is like it, that's what it looks like at the bare bones. You can see it was purchased this way, stained. Okay. So I'm just going to give it a good clean in front of you. I've got some Lysol disinfecting wipes. And I only need one. I also have near me some baby wipes. These were at the Dollar Rama for a dollar fifty, and I'm just gonna kind of wipe down. It's pleather, so it's not it's not gonna harm it. And I'm just gonna kind of give it a good little clean. Make sure all the you know whatever stuck to it is not stuck to it anymore. Now I've done this before, but you know you could use another one. I've been crafting a lot, so it picks up little bits of this and that and the other. And my, yeah, that's going to have to come off. That's going to have to come off. Okay. We will get you back on there, baby girl. Isn't she pretty? And all I'm doing is storing everything in a container to the side. Just in case you're wondering where I'm putting everything. So... Let's hope we don't hear a crash because my workspace is very um, small. <laughs> Honestly, it is. Uh, I've given you guys glimpses before, but it's quite small. So I just want to make sure that I get this all clean. And the reason I do is because I want to paint this. Not this part, but this part. This part here is okay. But this part is kind of janky, and I don't like it. So my favorite colors, as I explained yesterday, are white, pink, black, and gold. Black and gold were actually my high school colors. And fun fact, I wore a tuxedo to my high school um, graduation, and I did not go to the prom. And I didn't go to the prom because I ensured I was working every possible moment I could work to save to go away to school, which ended up, um, I ended up on a different track altogether because life happens when you're busy making other plans, right? Like that's just what happens. However, neither here nor there. It was just a little fun fact. So yeah, she's all clean now and I'm just going to put that wipe to the side because I might might need it for something. And I have, where did I put it? My special trick is this fabric sheet. I use these fabric sheets so often, guys, and I'm just pressing down with the fabric sheet. Okay, now this does two things. Gives it a nice smell, because this is pleather, right? It's pleather. It will absorb odors, 
you know, I don't want odors, um, but it will basically dry this, like, immediately, <laughs> okay? And I get, like, inundated with the smell of bounce sheets, which remind me of my nanny. I'm very um, sensitory. Okay, so she's she's ready to be primed for painting. Now, I could lay down newspaper. Um, I do have newspaper close by. I could lay that down if I was concerned, but I'm not. So if you're doing a project like this and you want to paint, you know, um, I'm just going to move that out of the way. Let's get you out of the way. So the first thing I want to do is I've got some various different brushes here. This is the one I gave the haircut. Okay. And it's in its own little hot water wash. And these are the... It's all over. Come on now. These are the long oil paint brushes that I told you about. And then I've got two other brushes in here as well. Okay. And that is what I'm going to be painting with. So the first thing I want to do is I want to prime this. I want to prime this area. Now, if I, if I wanted to, I could put tape here and protect it. You see, so I didn't get any tape, any paint on this. But actually, the paints that I'm using, the acrylic paints, will come up with a Lysol wipe unless I seal them. So I'm not too worried. So what I have is these paints, neon pink, Crafter Square um, white. I've got Crafter Square gold with sparklies in it and yes the almighty crafter square black now black is an interesting color because you cannot go back from black once you lay down black you got her on there so she's going to be laid down pretty sparingly and yesterday in my video i showed you guys this palette it's the Masterson Stay Wet Handy Palette. And what I did was, you see that water in there? I don't know if you can see it. Let me bring it up. See how it squishes? So that allows, like all of this other stuff in here. I mean, it can come out easy. Let's take that wipe that I almost discarded. And let's remove some excess paint. Like I said, I'm not overly precious with my art supply simply because I believe in the world of art, art is, is used. Um, but I could. I mean, I, I've had sessions where I've spent hours like getting really obsessed with cleaning this stuff. But for the most part, art is art. I have an art closet. And so there goes that white. So she's pretty clean. So this is really saturated, okay? And once I lay this paint on here, this paint will never dry up, never dry up. So if you guys remember that I poured those um, dyes into that container where I was using the dyes on the papers for my everything slash hybrid book, those ended up drying because I didn't really want to pour them out. What, what they needed to do is, because I couldn't use them all at once, they ended up drying, and I'll reconstitute them into, like, um, almost like dauber ink, like bingo dauber ink. So that's what I'll be using this palette for this when I get to that stage. Okay, so then the first thing I want to do is I've got some choices here to make. Let's just look over here for a second. Okay. Yeah, those are sealers. Okay, so I can go um, fluid matte medium. Okay, it's a low... Now I have... I have... Uh, 
even more than this. Okay, I've got like a big, big one. Because when it comes to priming stuff, like priming your pages and stuff like that, say you don't have a uh, thick paper and you want to paint on it, you would prime it with the gesso. And then that allows it to hold the paint. So this is a full-on gesso, like a full-on white gesso. I don't want that. So I put that up there. So I limited my, my choices to the low gloss acrylic extender and primer and this clear gesso. So do I want to put white down or do I want to use the clear? And I think I want to use the clear. So we're going to move that one out of the way. And take it out of the equation. Okay, so when it comes to this, I want to use a crappy brush. I really do. And I do have paper towels here. This paper towel roll, by the way, you can use by cutting up for stamping in your art. So I don't throw those out. I have a recycling bag that I use certain things for, crafts for with my grandkids and stuff like that when I have the energy. Okay, so I want to give this a really good shake. And all I really want to do is this section here. That's all I want to do. And I want to make sure that this brush is kind of dry. I mean wet, but kind of dry. And I don't care so much. The reason it's clear, it goes down white, but it dries clear. And I just want to kind of, like I said, I could put the newspaper down. Maybe I should, eh? Maybe I should. Been a while since I've even used this stuff, guys. Now, you see, do you see how the material's kind of like coming up with that? Because it isn't the best quality, it really isn't. So, I want to be kind of gentle with it, and obviously, it doesn't want me to. like rub it. Sometimes on cheaper materials, if you rub it, you're actually gonna rub it right up. And that happens with cheap paper too. But I'm not too worried overall. This is, you know, the world of art and art is messy and it's imperfect, which is fine. But laying this coat down is really key. So, like, I'm going rather thick on it, as you can tell. I'm going really thick, getting every kind of bit in there. So that when it dries, this clear gesso will dry kind of clear. And now I've got quite a bit over here. As you can see, quite a bit. So, I'm going to kind of Scoot her over a little bit, see what that is. That come up. And let's get a whole bunch down. And we're gonna do a few things while this is drying too. I'm not gonna subject you to the hair dryer while we're doing this. Now, I don't confess to be a great artist, guys, but I am my own artist, which means that I feel, for me, if I work on my art every day, it's only for me. It's for nobody else. I don't expect to be in the Louvre. 
You know, I don't expect my art to last a thousand years. I just want to look at something that I know that I did and I work on it every day. And whether or not you guys know this or not, uh, as long as I have energy, I try to work on a drawing every day, even if it's for five minutes. Because I used to draw, I used to paint, I used to do a lot of things. And um, drawing is a very calming thing. It's just sort of like coloring, you know, um, where you get those adult coloring books. Except for me, I just draw little scribbles and color them in. And I can show you two examples actually today, maybe. Um, that's in my planner part. Now here, I want to be careful that I don't overly gesso those um, snaps. And like I said, I am using a pretty, this brush is so old, guys. Like, you would think that I would just give up the ghost on it. <laughs> but I don't know, I'm I'm funny that way. Uh, I had a four, four slice toaster. My middle daughter for Christmas got me a two slice toaster or Mother's Day last year. I don't know when. Um, and <laughs> And I was meant to donate the four slice toaster. Or, you know, whatever. And I had a hard time parting with that four slice toaster, even though I would eat a piece of toast, if that, one piece of toast. And it took my middle daughter literally uh, popping in for a visit, checking my, my cupboard and saying, this is out of here. <laughs> and she put it up in, we have a, a, I live in the back end of a complex. So it, she put it in a box that's up near um, the laundry area for people. And so anybody can come along and take it. It still works, but still. Um, so as you can see, this one is already starting to clear a little bit. And that's all I've done is put on gesso. So now we're going to switch gears for a second. And I have to figure out what to do next. I'm going to move this book. And I know I should be working on the Commit 30 instead of going back to my everything book, but I'm not like that. I kind of jump back and forth between books and I want to be true and authentic to myself and not do what quote unquote is expected of me. I just, I do who I am basically. So that was the Liquitex clear gesso. Okay. And I, I've had this for some time, so it really holds up to the test of time. And as long as you close the lid, you're pretty good. So while we're doing that, I'm going to put some paint in here and just get a little bit ahead. Now I know I want quite a bit of pink. And this is acrylic. And I want to make sure that lid is down good. And then I've got the gold. Now this is new, so I don't know if there's a little... Yeah, there is. So I remember buying this when my last one ran out. And I hadn't used it again. So, But that was some time ago. Hello. Look at that beautiful gold. The tubes I love because you can put it right on the the um, the paintbrush. But when you're opening it up, just be careful, guys. Okay, look at that gold. Isn't that gorgeous? And these were all at the Dollar Tree. Now. These have gotten smaller, and they cost more. However, they are still, you know, at the Dollar Tree. This is the acrylic paint in white. And like I said, these are my favorite colors. And white is a great color because it will dull down any color. And I'm just going to take a baby white.
And baby wipes are a really key thing to have on hand when you're mucking around with paints and stuff. Just because, you know, like, you see, like they, they wash off. Acrylic paints come off. Unless you put a mixture in them like... Um, where did I put that? Like this, this deco art, I can mix this with the paints and it becomes a sealer. Um, but I was uh, going to show you guys that later. So I've got some white paint there. Okay, and now the black. I wonder if this one's new. No, it's not. That's good. I'm just going to... There we go. So I hope you guys are choosing to be creative alongside of me or maybe just having your cup of coffee and just relaxing and watching this, you know, or maybe getting to other things and just listening to my voice as you go about your business. However you do it, I don't know. I read a lot of your comments yesterday. Um, thank you so much. Um, I really appreciate all the kind compliments and words and phrases and sentences. And, um, so what I was about to do is put the lid on it. Now, once I do that mat there, will keep this essentially forever. Um, I think the longest I've had paint in here and I got this with the jazzy, um, box. It was a three tiered box. It was super expensive. And I think that opening is on my channel in 2020, I think 2020. I wonder if that's before the video went down or not, or my channel went down or not. I'm not sure. Anyway, it keeps it wet. So we'll get back to that. In the meantime, I want to show you, we're going to move these paints. Actually, we'll leave them there while I show you a few more things. So once we paint the inside of that cover once once that um, gesso is dry once we add the paints then I have to make a choice on what I'm gonna do am I going to sketch inside of there and paint because really unless I use the hairdryer it's gonna take longer to dry and then once it's dry I'm gonna have to seal it so I have oh here was here was another like full on gesso in the tube. So like I did have quite a few choices, but I didn't want like basic white. So I've got a few sealers. Um, decoup this is, um, I can't pronounce that. I'm just going to say deco art gloss glue sealer finisher. This is the deco art Americana multi-purpose sealer. Then, of course, our known, uh, this is matte. I also have gloss, Mod Podge. Um, this is also sealer, but you can also get the small tubes like this at the Dollar Tree. And this is matte. And I don't know if they had any gloss. Yeah, here's the gloss one in the orange. I don't know if I want gloss or matte. So those will be next. So I know it seems like a whole lot of stuff and yeah, maybe it is, but you know, if you're passionate about projects, that's pretty much what you do. And as long as I keep my hands busy, you know, I have a grand old time and you know, at my age, you gotta, you gotta embrace it. So I'm just putting these colors up here in case I need to use them. So what has inspired me is this picture here. And this is from the 2024 Daphne's Diary. And I love this bunny because if you look, she's got my favorite colors. She's got white, 
She's outlined in black. She's got pink. And on her finger, she's got a gold ring. And then there are these black and white houses, the three houses. And if you've been following my channel long enough, you'll know that I've been working on a piece of writing that includes three houses for a long time. Uh, what's holding me back is a mental block, and I'm fully aware of that. Um, but that's okay. That's okay. It'll come when it comes. So I have an idea for each of these as well. Now, I have this one because you see these pictures here? I want to laminate those, but I don't want to haul out my laminator to do it. And I'm just giving you a quick flip of this magazine. Daphne's Diary, guys, is the bomb. It is the bomb. It's got all sorts of, like, here's, like, more houses. Like this big sheet. What's this one coming out? Oh, that's papers that are included in here. Look at this big sheet of houses. How long that is. So you could literally like color that and make that into like a flip out of a journal and then journal on the back. It's awesome. I, I love this magazine. I, I can't even, can't even express how much I love this magazine comes usually with vintage stickers. I've used those already. And then look, there's pieces of villages and gardening and food. Like this is a layer by layer cake. I've done something similar. I think that's done with pancakes, is it not? No. But I've done this with pancakes. I've done complete cakes like this for my girls' birthday using pancakes. Yeah, so there's just some beautiful artwork in here. Look at that. Like if you're into food and cooking and gardening, you've got like so many images. So, but I do want that teapot because it has basically my favorite colors. Look, it's got the gold, it's got the pink, the white, and it's outlined in black. And then this paintbrush with the, with the heart coming out of it. So while we're waiting for that to dry, I'm just going to quickly fussy cut these out, I guess. And I want to kind of leave, like I want the diary too. So I think I'm going to like take most of it out, but I want the date still remaining of this um, magazine because I've made the mistake before of ripping the entire cover off. And then I don't know what month it's from or, you know, any of that. Because if I wanted to go back to Daphne's Diary and order a back issue, and these are very thick. If I wanted to order a back issue, um, being that I'm on a subscription, it's substantially cheaper and I don't know which one I want. So, you know, these scissors are not the strongest. I could pull out my good ones, but I don't really want to. So sometimes I just want to fussy cut things, you know, really. That's all I want to do is just like cut things out, paste things. <laughs> and, you know, I spent some time giving you an example of doing just exactly that. Just cutting things out of magazines and pasting things down. Um, and that was like earlier on because I don't sleep very much guys so you know um, I just picked some images that I liked out of a magazine started cutting them out and that's kind of what I do and I know for some of you you might be thinking well no I'm a planner I'm not really like into doing that but if you're ever in a slump and you don't know what to do um it's something to consider. Now, how do I want to do this? 
I do have laminating sheets. Where are they? I bought these at the Dollar Tree as well. And so I have to be mindful of the size. So I actually have one more. So I bought three packs of the three packs. You guys see in those? I could actually lower you right now, but um, I'm going to keep you up high this time. Pray you can hear me. And I'm just going to go in for the cut. Now, these are thick, so I don't know how, how they're going to work or where they're going to fit in. But I just find this process so absolutely relaxing of cutting. And I've often asked myself, well, why aren't I doing this on camera? And the answer always seems to be because I'm assuming what you guys will like. And, and see, that's a mindset I don't want to get into because I always want to be true to myself when I do these videos. And I, I, choose to do them as a form of entertainment and a routine, not as a, a job. Um, and and that's the difference. I, I want this as a pleasurable thing for me. And, um, it, you know, my hope and, and goal is to end stigma, you know, and just have, you know, all hobbies be accepted as, you know, what they are. Art is very important. Uh, we need art in our lives to keep um, hope and faith and all of that strong because, you know, it's hard, right? Like, life can be hard. So if we have an outlet of beauty, and when I say that, it's absolutely true. Now, I don't think I can get that in there, but that would be beautiful if I could. Yeah, I know. I'm not even sure I can do it. Well, if I did it sideways, but I still wouldn't be able to get that in there. It would be nice to get that blue flower in there, but I don't think I can. But yeah, like I, art is important. If you think of a painting that was done uh, in the book I read, The Goldfinch by Donna Tart, she writes about this painting and I won't give it away. It's an excellent book if you're looking for a recommendation on a book. Uh, I, I remember, Connie, I think you asked uh, to do book reviews. Well, I'll just tell you a little bit about this one. Um, probably the best um, he had a friend in this story and named Boris and um, I'm telling you, like, this character was really well written, extremely well written. And the book hinges on a painting. And, and it's the goldfinch. It's a real painting. It was done uh, in 1654 on a piece of wood. It's not very big, but it's very, very heavy. And it's survived through fires it survived over time and it's of a, a goldfinch that looks like it's just perched against a, a wall um, but if you look closely at the photograph there's a weensy tiny little chain around its leg so it's actually chained to the wall and since it was painted in 1654, you've got to imagine, like, it would probably have been in the kitchen or something. Uh, they had one room, so then you've got kids there. It wouldn't have been able to fly anywhere. The chain wasn't very long. Um, you would have had coal smoke and all of that. You would have had to think of what that life was for that goldfinch, but yet... Um, the way the artist painted it, that bird looked like it was resilient. Now, I don't think I'm going to even bother trying to fussy cut the inside of that. No, I don't think I am. 
because I'm not that good. <laughs> so I highly recommend The Goldfinch by Donna Tartt. The history of the painting is in there. You could look up The Goldfinch, uh, 19 or 16, pardon me, 1654. Um, and you could learn all about it. It's traveled all over the world, uh, museums to museums. It's probably one of, if not the, no, it's one of the most expensive paintings in the world. And when you have a painting that expensive, of course, you can't sell it on the black market. I mean, <laughs> you know, and the painter whose name I can't remember, um, it's very like a, a it's like a name I, I just can't remember because he was European or, um, you know, it's funny to think that you could have a legacy like that and not even know it, not even know it. He was never famous in his life. And that, that's very true. You know, it's very true with a lot of artists, unless you're fortunate, you know, or something happens that, you know, I don't know. Um, so that's another piece that I wanted to laminate. And the word diary, I also wanted to laminate. Now, how much can I get in there? I think I can just get the word diary. I hope this isn't too boring and that I'm not out of frame. While I wait for that gesso to dry, or dry enough, there is my neighbor with the Mustang. He was the one I was telling you guys about the other day that just wanted to talk. Yeah. Obviously, he's off to work. corner cut. So I've got that, that, and that. And I'm going to keep this because there's still some ephemera pieces on here that I want to use. Okay, what are we doing for time? 42 minutes, is that right? It's hard for me to look in the screen. Um, I don't want to lose this page here. Maybe I'll use a piece of this board to mark that as a bookmark. I could turn this into a bookmark actually on my other laminator. But yeah, I absolutely love Daphne's diary. Okay, let's close this up for a second so you guys can see it. And I'm just going to, these are the double sheeted ones too. We don't have a Daiso here um, in my city. We don't have a Daiso. Now this paper here is great for junk journals. So most people throw it out self-laminating cards. I have to read it because it's been so while since I've used them. Okay, so. Insert your photograph facing down into the self-laminating card with the adhesive. Okay, so that's the adhesive side. Oh, I see. And then I pull the paper. Okay, so let's do this. And you know, like I said, it's not overly pretty from the back. But it does have something. And then you pin it down and roll it down. 
just like that. And I think I pushed it in a little too far or didn't remove the white strip, but it doesn't matter. That white strip is not gonna break me. This is like glossy paper. You could put like stickers on that. Let's try another one and remind myself not to forget to remove that top piece here. That has to come out of there. Let's put this next one in. Grab this. These are a really like great invention. Try not to get them to bubble. Trying to move them up so you can see it a little bit more. I could use my bone folder. Where's my bone folder? This thing needs a good wash, that's for sure. So there we have that. And the third and final one is this diary, which seems like a waste, right? But for me, Sorry if you guys, oh, you guys can see it. I've got the camera up high enough. I hope you guys can hear me well. I tend to get quiet sometimes. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so yeah, I mean, I could come along and make bookmarks out of this or whatever. I can't believe I forgot to take the white piece out of the teacup, but that's okay because it's not going to be perfect anyway. After you go into your home, and I'm just going to cut around this. And it's going to be thick with that paper as boy. I don't even know if it'll seal there. But accidents or, you know, like mistakes like this are really good because then you learn. And it's just like a bad drawing or a bad painting, you know, it's it, none of it is wasted because each each of it teaches you something like it, it, it. That's the thing about it, like whether or not it's the best that you've ever done, it doesn't matter because when you're doing art, any kind of art, even if you say, oh, I can't draw a stick man, for example, I've heard that a lot. It doesn't matter because I cut too close. Hopefully I didn't. Um, every time you do draw, you get closer and closer and closer to just bringing out that muscle memory because that's all drawing is. And this is coming from somebody who just scribbles. I don't even like, yeah, I just scribble. So that's pretty. So you really can't tell that that white part was left there. I'm wondering if I can make use of some of this acetate in my moleskin, but that thing's getting chunky too. Really chunky. Oh, I hear the birds outside. Spring is definitely coming. It's just, you know, I was so shocked yesterday because the weather, like, took a dive. I know, Thelma, you were telling me um, in your comments that you went from plus 18 degrees Celsius to minus, what was it, 5? That's, yeah, 
you live in Alberta, I think, right? So Alberta is the next province beside mine. Now, I'd, I'm going to go straight up here because if I make this into a bookmark or something, I want to keep it. But I want smooth edges. I don't want harsh ones. So yeah, our weather, I was surprised yesterday because we had predictions of sun all week and warm, and then it just changed overnight, totally changed completely. So there's two. And then the last one, and then we'll get to painting. And if I don't finish it on camera, I'll definitely come back and show you what the end product was. Or a film of part two, I guess. I don't know. Like, I often think about, do you guys like part ones and part twos? I don't know. Do you like these kind of videos where I'm doing, like, processes of what I'm doing? I'm going to do what I enjoy doing, but it's always nice to get, like, input, too. You know? And I did get some input about what... There's a lot of plastic on here, so like I said, I'll keep that because you never know um, what you can use it for. So that's really pretty. So these turned out really nice, really nice, you know. A little picture of a man and a woman. So let's see. Is that stuff dry yet? Yeah, well, it's not bad. We can do that. So we're going to take this and where are we going to put it? Those can go in there. This can go up here. And hello, come on back. All right. So what brush do I want to use and what colors? Part of me also wants to consider the Commit 30 and that, oh, I was going to laminate this too. I can still do that. Or seal it on. Because I just think that's so beautiful. Might seal that on, but I do have to burn off the... threads here before they all pull away even though I'll probably have to do this again if I cut it. This is such a cheap lighter. Bix are so much better. Come on. Okay, well it's not going to go right now. It doesn't want to go. So I'm wondering, part of me is wondering too, like I have my favorite colors, but I'm just wondering if I have a certain green. There it is. Because this green is also in my contender list. Now what brush am I going to use and where are the paper towels? So yeah, let's see. I really need a good size brush, so I guess it's the biggest one. And I don't want my paintbrush too wet. Not with acrylics. And this will have to go down in layers, which means... Acrylics are a little bit different anyway than watercolors. I mean, watercolors, if you want to build up the colors, you have to wait, but um, acrylics are a little bit different. Okay. So, let's get the 
this down. So if some of you are yelling at me like, what the heck are you doing? <laughs> I am absolutely enjoying myself. And I think you've got to do whatever you got to do to make whatever you have pleasurable, enjoyable, and not be afraid to be creative just because you don't see it anywhere else, you know, or, you know, or the opposite. Don't get caught in the trap of doing something that you see somebody else doing when you know it's not something you're going to enjoy. Um, I can't stress that enough. Like, don't do this to your books if this isn't something that's for you. I mean, it might just be interesting to watch, but, you know, if it's not your thing, that's fine. I just always knew that I wanted to cover up that stain. And you can see now that the first coat is on. white going here. Yeah, so whatever you whatever your process is, whatever your art style is, it's all good. It really is. You just have to be you, brave enough to be you. And that's it. And whatever it is you like to do, do it. Now, for me, this isn't going to be this bright because it's going to come down and color quite a bit. I'm going to need more pink. Lots more pink. Because it does go into the mat. And I do want to give it a good coating. And that white paint there, that will take it down at like a color um, level too. Yeah, but I always knew that I wanted to put paint on this. And I, I mentioned it. Um, as I was doing the um, creation of the covers right from day one, I believe, when I was like exploring my own supplies to see how I could um, transport this, this Commit 30, which is the large size, because for some reason, um, my friend and I, uh, my friend Tammy, who, who, graciously gifted it to me uh, we thought it was like an A5 size or just smaller than an A5 size and then the large came well I love the large absolutely love it it was a happy mistake very happy um, if such a thing exists as happy mistakes I don't know but it was all that was left because everybody was on the commit 30 bandwagon this year and as you can see I'm just picking up some of the pilling that's happening from the material underneath because it's this like faux suede material and it, it's wanting to do its own thing. But I just like the vibrant color. And in a way, my Commit 30 with the word journey is sort of like an Alice in Wonderland tribute, like going down the rabbit hole. You know, I've been down the rabbit hole and I've, I'm still down there, you know? And, and it's not a bad place, guys. I mean, it's really not. It's like walking a wall, right? You got your foot on one side and the foot on the other side. And it's not a bad place to be. And many creatives are, actually, um, in that same space because 
um, we can look at the world and see a different vision than what is actually in front of us. And so that's why I like this bright, bright color. But it's always been my four favorite colors anyway. It's always been in there. And so, you know, I don't know if you can see the improvement yet or not. But we're getting to the final part where the first coat is on. And with acrylics, you can literally layer them up, layer them up, layer them up. And work on them while they're wet. Um, whereas with watercolor, it's good to dry kind of between the layers unless you want them to play and mix least in my experience. Because you can completely change a, a watercolor composition by adding too much water or adding too much other color or adding a layer too soon. You know, I want, where did I put that baby wipe? I could have put tape over these, but again, like I said, the watercolor is really like non-staining. So Oops. there goes the brush and onto my pants. <laughs> and good thing it's non-staining. Whatever. Here's what it is. Okay. So let's mix. Let's put this down for a second. What are we doing for time? We're at the hour mark. Let's mix a little white into the pink. And just give it a second coat. All of this takes time, you guys. I might just paint until the time is up where I have to, you know, say I'll have to come back and leave it and go on my walk and come back and film part two. Um, of course, I have appointments. <laughs> I have a day. We all have that. But you see this color here, how I've softened it up? That's sort of the color I was after. But that's probably what I'm going to have to do. And then I will like bring it all together. And then once this cover is done for me, I don't know. Like, I, I don't know actually if this cover is even going to be done then. Because I've been looking at the outside of it, the brown on the outside. And I, at some point when you take a project and you start working it, you, you ask yourself at what point do you say you're done? You know, what point do you say you're done? I'm the same with my writing. At what point do I say I'm done? Is it my deadline? Because that's generally how it is with me. Um, mind you, I'm on sabbatical and even my own personal writing lately, I've kind of had to just take a breather from. That's the second coat there. get a second coat here and it's so much easier with the second coat because the first coat is down I hope you guys have been crafting along or planning along or crocheting along or you know whatever it is whatever craft having a cup of tea and just kicking up from your busy day I really hope that that's what these videos are for you, is a moment where you can just take a break in your day too. Because that, that really pleases me the most. And when you guys write that in the um, commentary box, it just really warms my heart and I thank you so, so much. So, 
I think for the moment, now I got a lot of paint on there, right? So I'm just gonna like kind of use my brush and get it off. You see that? Like that. And then I'm just gonna fix that mark. Just fix it up. And then, even though it's still on there like that, I just put the lid down and grab another baby wipe. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this. I'm going to go on my walk. And it's still fairly early, like really early. And I don't have an appointment until like just this afternoon, like early afternoon. So that's really good. Now I'm going to just put that in the water in the mason jar. As you can see here, it's going to turn all the water pink. And I'm surprised I didn't dump that whole water all over everything. But yeah, I'm going to seal this up. And when I come back, I will do part two. And part two is going to somehow incorporate this rabbit. And... These laminations. So you've seen the rabbit, but these laminations, because I just think they're fantastic. And then we'll put it all together and and figure it all out. But for right now, we're at. Yeah, we're at. Oh, I can't even read you guys, honestly. Minute an hour and something so I'm not even sure so folks remember we're perfectly imperfect we are all loved needed and wanted far far more than you will ever know and I will speak with you next time probably a part two then I've got an idea for another video and you'll want to see that one as well so and then I've got some journal with me or yeah journal with me so I got plan with me I got a lineup guys I actually do like the ideas have been kind of pouring out of me. Plus, I have a Dollar Tree haul coming up. Lots of stuff. So, you know, hang on, hang on tight. Because if I start figuring out that I've got way more and I'm doing them anyway or I want to put them away, I might be posting more videos up. So let me know in the commentary box if you want me to post more videos. Um, because I do have a lot. I'm, I'm here crafting practically every time I'm not out at an appointment and I'm not cleaning my house so um, or reading or, you know, doing my lessons. But nonetheless, you get the point or walking. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Why don't I just say goodbye? OK, guys, I will see you next time. Talk to you soon. Take care and remember, have a blessed and beautiful day, a happy, happy Thursday. But most of all, please. I wish that you and your family will all be safe on this glorious day. Bye for now, folks.